Welcome back guys to my 8th devlog on my Voxel game engine. You can check out all of the other devlogs in the card in the top right hand corner of the video. And in this video I'm going to be showing you what I've managed to get done this month. I've made quite a bit of progress in fixing the performance issues that I was having last month. And I've increased the performance in my test scene by more than six times. This was done using a new rendering system that I have discussed partly in my previous devlog. And as I said, you can check those videos out in the card in the top right hand corner of the screen. But before I get into that, I'm actually pleased to announce that this video is sponsored by Core. Core is a new free game creation platform built on Unreal Engine. And anyone interested in making games should definitely check it out as it's a great way to learn and get started. You don't need any coding experience to get started with Core. But if you want to, you can script your own game logic in Lua to make more complex experiences. They also provide thousands of high quality assets such as music, sound effects, and 3D models. And when you're done, you can publish your game instantly to the Core platform for everyone to play. Core has also recently announced that they're doing a 50% revenue share with all their game creators. That's two times Roblox's current revenue share. So that's pretty amazing. Core also has an invitational game jam this summer with $140,000 of prizes to be won, including a Tesla Model 3. And all you need to do is submit your portfolio as soon as possible. Once you're in, you and 49 other creators will have a month to create the most awesome game you can in Core. You don't need any prior experience in Core and all the creators accepted in the Core Invitational Jam, excluding the award winners, will receive $1,000 for a valid submission to support their game dev dreams. Core is completely free, so be sure to check them out with the link in the description. Now on to the rest of the video. As I said at the beginning of the video, I've been working on my new rendering algorithms and it's finally paid off. I'm now using a grid hierarchy instead of an oak tree, and that allows me to use a distance field stored in the voxel grid to traverse the ray efficiently and make it skip empty space. So each voxel stores the distance to the nearest voxel in steps. I'm using this scene that you can see here to test performance as it's quite a challenge to render as there's not much empty space that the ray could traverse quickly with there being loads of voxels randomly all over the place. With the regular DDA algorithm, in this scene I get about 18 frames per second. So if I change this to use a distance field that can only store two distances, basically one step or two steps, using one bit per voxel, we get about 47 FPS. So that's three times faster from the regular DDA with only a one bit distance field. That's because the, in the empty space, the ray can now step two voxels at a time, which makes it more efficient. Now the distance field can be increased to eight bits. So a max of 256 values. And you can see how that would improve rendering performance humongously if I've already gotten a three times increase with just two values and a one bit distance field. Now there is an issue with increasing the values in the distance field is as the distance field increases max value, the time to calculate the field increases dramatically. That's because you have to calculate the distance for every voxel over a larger distance. However, this calculation can be run over multiple frames, splitting the calculation up on the graphics card. And that's something I'm gonna be working on over the next month. Now to get this whole system working, I had to modify the DDA algorithm to be able to do multiple steps at once. Using Shader Toy for this was a massive help to be able to view what my algorithm was actually doing. And I'll link the shader I used as a base so that if you wanna mess around with the DDA algorithm and make your own custom algorithms for voxel traversal, you can do that too. As you can see, this is showing the ray steps. So the ray steps three voxels in the first step, two in the second, and one in the last. And each dot is the location of one of the steps. This kind of shows you how the algorithm is actually working. And that gets run for every pixel on the display to be able to intersect the distance field and traverse it. After getting this working, I wanted to compare it to my previous rendering algorithms for performance. And I did this by loading up the Magic of Voxel scene that I used in my sixth devlog to test performance. And that's using the old rendering algorithm. It could only render that scene at 13 frames per second, which is pretty terrible. It also hit the maximum ray steps 
as you can see with the yellow pixels showing that pixel has overstepped the maximum ray steps. The red pixels show a high step count. I then also loaded the same scene into my new renderer and it already hit 25 frames per second without the distance field being activated. That's already two times faster with no distance field enabled. So that's pretty amazing. After enabling the distance field with a max step of four, it hits 74 frames per second in the same scene. That's over five times faster than the old renderer. And if I set the distance field to 16 steps as a max, we hit my frame rate cap at 74 FPS completely. So I'm very happy with these results and I'm ready to move on to new parts of the engine and kind of put the rendering algorithms behind me for a bit because that's taken quite a lot of time to get to this point. I now need to bring this all back up together with my caching system, streaming system, so that massive scenes can be rendered again at much better performance so that we can get back to having humongous voxel scenes. So stay tuned for the video next month and also don't forget to check out Core with the link in the description. I should also let you guys know that I'm moving over the next month and I'm starting a job that I'm really excited about. So I'm going to be quite busy over the next month but hopefully the videos will still be on time. So as always, I'll see you guys in the next video and thanks so much for watching.